everyone. I'm so glad you've come back because if you're like me, you want to know how this friendship has developed. And I'm going to go straight to David. David, there is a, a um, isn't there an Egyptian saying, your house is my house or welcome or what is that wonderful Egyptian saying? Uh, it's a greeting. We greet uh, people with, it's, uh, in Arabic, it's called Ahlan wa Sahlan which uh, it's, two, it's a one word of uh, two words of two phrases. It means that in Arabic, it means uh, which means in English, you have found a, a home and you have found a family. And so we welcome people into, not to our home, we welcome people to the family. You have found a family and you have found a home. So I, I think that's the, the, the chemistry that we, we interact with between uh, Asher and myself. His family became my family, and then suddenly his bigger family became my family, and my family and my bigger family became his family. And our homes are actually, we are developing and venturing together on what does it mean to walk in this oneness that the Bible and Jesus prayed for. And we are uh, uh, discovering that step by step. Actually, we are an experiment. We are experimenting together. We're under construction of that between uh, an Egyptian Gentile and a Messianic Jew, and how do they walk together in the oneness that Jesus prayed for? You know, I'm always, uh, this oneness that Jesus prayed for, it's fascinating that I don't think there has been a time, and I'll go to you here, Asha. I don't think that there has been previous to this time in history, a time for this. Do you think that this is the time that it's the Lord has waist, waited until it is coming together now? Or was it missed in the past? Did he try with somebody and wars? Well, I would say this, uh, of course, Everyone who really believes in Yeshua, Jesus, we're all one in heart. And we always have been. All believers have always been that way. Every, anyone who walks in the Holy Spirit. But there's something that's happened in this generation that just wasn't available anytime. One thing was, uh, previous to any of our relationship, was, of course, the whole move in East Asia. And that's interesting that one of the things that also attracted me to David was that he had invested so much time in East Asia. And it was like that huge part of the family came to the table, which changed the whole dynamic of, of who we understand ourselves as the people of God. And then uh, when you brought into that the element of Israeli, Egyptian, Jewish, Arab coming into that dynamic as well, it, it seemed to complete the circle. And uh, I, here's the, one of the things I think is different is that I think Christians at any time in history felt one in the faith. But there is something about when you come back to Jews and Arabs, you're coming back to the ancient covenants. You're coming back to the ancient families. You're coming back to that our oneness is not just spiritual. There's history. There's people. There's dynamics. There's cultures. There's giftings. And, and to different smells, different colors. And I think we've brought that in uh, that, that hasn't been there before. And uh, again, I, I, I just want to credit my dear friend David for who just has a, a tremendous love for different people's cultures and their places and 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 giving everyone a chance uh, uh, to be there which has been a very an opening experience for me you know in in my relationship with David and everyone else I've had to really expand my heart you know to to see well there has to be their place for East Asians and 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 Arabs and it, but you you have to just shoo, open up a lot more more to embrace people. And, and, and with that, Asher, you're talking about you know, the East Asians and their main factor in that. But the global family, uh, as much as we know it today, there is very few messianic representation. But my own experience, Asher, and I said that to you many times. Were in Munich, I, it was so tangible. 
that at this time in Munich, 2015, there was a, a, a enough critical mass, enough representation from colors, tribes, and nations from the Gentile family, mm. especially the, the uh, Asians as you were talking, but there was a missing element. The, 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 because I have been walking with them for many years, so the Arab element joined in with the global family, the colors and tribes and nations, and the missing part was the interaction and the covenant with the Messianic family. And when I met Asher in, in Munich, and we entered into, it's actually divine. We didn't think about it. We didn't make a decision. We didn't sit down to talk about, should we walk together or not? It, it was God uh, uh, draw, drew our hearts together. And suddenly we found that trust, that foundation of trust. And it's very interesting. I had that trust with Gideon, Pastor Gideon Chu from Church of Zion, and we walked this way. I never doubted his motives. I mean, uh, Gideon is different personality than me, uh, and he's Chinese and I'm Egyptian. And when we walked together, I never doubted his motives, even when I didn't understand. Even when people said to me, how can Gideon do that? I said, I don't know, but he ha must have a reason. He never doubted his motive, even some of the actions I didn't understand, and some some of them rubbed me on the wrong side. But my the motive has I have never doubted in Gideon. And the same thing I discovered with Asher. Uh, he can do wrong. It doesn't matter. I will ask him, Asher, why did you do that? And uh, he would explain to me. And if I don't agree, I'll tell him I don't. Agree. That kind of a relationship does not touch the trust that I have for him. That I feel I never. I, I don't doubt his motives. I know he has the global family in his heart. He has the Arab family in his heart. He has the best interest of that. So when we met in Munich, and that was the joining really of that reality, suddenly I would have never been where I am without Asher. The global family would have not been where they are without Asher. And I'm not focusing on Asher as a person now, I'm focusing on who does he represent. So the Gentile globally, including the Arab family, would have not come to that level of authority and level of execution of God's uh, governmental uh, 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 part as uh, a spiritual authority without the messianic element in it. And Asher was the best taste and flavor for the global family and for the uh, Arab family. And through that, a lot of the Messianic family we're getting into, a lot are walking with uh, uh, Asher and the global family and myself now that there is a, a, a wider body. But I, I, I wanted to say this, that what, what is happening in the global family would have never been uh, 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 in the breakthrough that we're in now without the Messianic family coming alongside and seeing the, the, the wild branch grafted in and the uh, natural branch grafted in, but these two branches, the sap is mixing together in one tree and we are coming into that place at this time. You know, Lauren, I, I wanted to mention something. You, you were asking about whether there was conflict. Um, I said, I, I don't know that David and I personally have had so much conflict. There's been a lot of conflict around us, but I would say this. Uh, and this, I don't know, it'd be interesting. Uh, I'm not even sure what the, how David would answer this for himself, but I think for me and for other Messian Jews, there's been a lot of internal conflict. Uh, not so much for me with David or for any of us with the, with the uh, Arabs or the Egyptians, but uh, an internal wrestling with who we are. Uh, there's something uh, so the deep and troubling for Israelis, for Jews, trying to figure out who we are, particularly as believers in Jesus, in Yeshua. And then when you go to the issues of the Arabs and the Egyptians, you realize if you're talking about the family of faith, you're talking about the first two believers and then the first three believers and the first four believers. And how did they get along? In other words, you were touching into something that is the root of the root of the root of interpersonal relationships in faith and in covenant. 
And I know that uh, I just want to be honest. There was a lot of struggle for me before the Lord in trying to understand, well, who was Abraham? And I, I look at Abraham and I thought, well, he, you know, he, he, God closed his wife's womb so that she couldn't have a baby so that because this had to be, this couldn't be a mistake. This, this was the hand of God that then he would bring in Hagar and then Ishmael would be born first. And I looked at that saying, wait a minute, Ishmael was born before Isaac. And then it, the going, and then there was this, the very beginning of faith of this going back and forth. And even God speaking to, to Abraham and saying, I, I, I want you to bless the nations. And how deep this is in, in Jewish identity that, that looking at people in the nation, Gentiles, Goyim as being second class and, and just a, a huge change for us. And, and uh, just one last word of that of just what we meant by family is that it, it, and as, as you come up to the book of Romans and, and, and Galatians and Paul starts saying, Abraham's family is everyone that's come to faith and just changing what do we mean by identity, by covenant, who and open up and die to that sort of ethno-centered, can I say that word again, ethno-centered view that this is how we interpret everything. And I mean, I'm not saying ne something negative against our people, but we see everything as ethnocentric. I mean, with it, we are, we see ourselves as the center. And it's a deep process of um, humility and, re and repentance and realizing that, that wait a minute, this is, this is God's will to bless everyone. And we're all in this together. It's it's giving up. There's something, a deep, deep thing of giving up what you understand of your national destiny and identity. What is your relationship with one another? It's just, it, and, and realizing this particular relationship, I think there's also something that Dave and I feel deeply about that we've kind of stumbled in or been dragged in or tricked in, as David says, but we're, we're, we're touching right back. What happened? When, when Ishmael and Isaac looked at one another in, in the eyes, what happened? What happened with their father, with Abel, with Hagar, with Sarah? What, what it, and we realize this is healing the, in the history, the domino of re relationships. This is the first domino that has to be fixed. And so I think we both have the fear of God in that. That's true, Asha. And uh, many of the times I think about Ishmael, uh, he is a, a, a fruit of the seed of Hagar and Abraham. And if we call Ishmael, what kind of ethnicity is he? Is he Egyptian? Because he's out of the womb of Hagar. Is he uh, from the Abraham seed? And, and sometimes we come into that rift that happened as you talk about Ishmael and Isaac, and they have to depart. Uh, we are coming now into the place of redemption because we, mm. I, I love the verse, the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth. The lamb that was slain before the sin was even conceived. Mm. And I believe God had a redemptive uh, destiny for everything when man lays hold of it. He had a redemptive destiny. And some we have seen, like Joseph and his brothers, the Lord redeemed at the end. And some we have not seen because it takes generations and any times for it to be fulfilled. And part of that is Ishmael and Isaac. And I, I, I feel as, as an Egyptian, uh, that's why one of the things I'm connecting with you, Asher, because I feel uh, we stumbled into, uh, uh, I come in a, as an Egyptian, as a mother of of Ishmael and as a, a joint seed with Abraham. Sarah comes as a mother of Isaac and a joint seed with Abraham. We come from a, 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 a perspective, it cannot be more clearer of what the Lord wants to do as a one new man, as Isaiah 19, as the unity of John 17. And uh, I always look at the Last Supper uh, when Jesus sat with the disciples, they were all Jewish at that table is now open for Asians, for Latinos, for Africans, for Arabs. That table 
through the blood of Jesus, you and I are coming into that place. And uh, uh, there is a lot, of, a lot of confusion, and it will be, because the enemy hates that union, that oneness. Because that oneness between me as an Egyptian and you as a Messianic Jew, me as a Christian Egyptian and you as a Messianic Jew, it, it reminds the, the enemy of the, of the end of days. It reminds him of one day he will be bound forever. And he hates that. So the closer we come to that fulfillment of that in reality, not only in concept, the enemy will stir up even righteous people. They will not know why they are stirred. And I'm committed to walk with in this way with you, Asher, to lay down our lives. Maybe we'll see it in our lifetime. I hope so. And that's my prayer. But I am laying down my life to see the generation coming, my children and your children, that they will experience what Jesus longed for and what you and I have laid down our life for. Amen. Amen. Very beautiful. I don't think that we can, this is so deep that we're going into now that I really don't want to rush anything. So we're going to come back to this, if you don't mind. I, I'm hearing now um, Isaiah 19. So I want to just say to everyone, will you join us again? We're going to come back together and we're going to look at how we can be part of all of this together. And it's not just Arab and Jew, but it's every ethnic group throughout the world. David, Asha, thank you. I'm going to have you back. <laughs>